Now that I received parts I ordered, let's continue assembling these 555 timer dev boards and try them out. We went through the schematic in a previous video, but here's a quick reminder of what this circuit is. There's a 555 chip on here, and it has some built-in capacitors and resistors for timing networks, along with several jumpers that you can remove or install to bring all these components in or out of circuit. The idea is you can configure this in A-stable mode or monostable mode, and there's an 8-pin header where input power is delivered and the output pin appears, and all the other pins on the 555. So you can take a component out of circuit and hook up a different one on these headers if you like. It's meant to be just a standby circuit board for a quick start if you suddenly need some sort of clock source or you just want to experiment with 555 and you don't want to be digging around for breadboard parts necessarily. There's two LEDs connected to the output pin as well, so you can see when the output is high or low if you're running slow enough to be able to distinguish those two states. And I added this little duty cycle adjust circuit so we can play around with the concept of keeping the frequency relatively constant while being able to change the duty cycle. Because in general, if you have an A-stable oscillator, as you change the timing components and change the frequency, the duty cycle changes all over the place as well. So we can experiment with a few of these modes of operation of the 555. I chose some arbitrary resistor and capacitor values to populate, but of course, whatever we want can be put on the board depending what sort of control we need over the circuit that we are prototyping. I tried to set this up so that we can use it anywhere between a VCC of 5 volts up to 12 volts, and that will be constrained by things like having LEDs on board that have to have a current limit resistor. So constraining it between 5 and 12 volts. I chose a 4.7K current limit resistor, and that should allow us to safely drive the LED between 5 volts and 12 volts and the power dissipation on this resistor should be well within limits. So when we are at 5 volts, these two LEDs get just over half a milliamp each, but it's still enough to light them. Now that the board is assembled, let's test out a few of the modes of operation. If we want to generate an oscillator in A stable mode, we have a resistor from VCC to the discharge pin, another resistor from discharge to threshold, and threshold is connected straight to trigger. So we would set these jumpers so that we have a potentiometer from VCC to the discharge pin, and then a jumper here connects the discharge pin down to another potentiometer to threshold, and a jumper over here connects threshold to trigger. That gives us this A-stable configuration. So by changing the resistors and or capacitor, we change the timing characteristics and the output on pin 3 will vary its frequency and duty cycle accordingly. I have the board hooked up in A-stable mode using one onboard timing capacitor. Both potentiometers are all the way counterclockwise and I'm hooked up to a breadboard to get 5 volt power. I have scope probes that I can hook up so right now I'm just using channel 2 to look at the frequency on the output pin. And with these component values we have 75.76 Hz with a duty cycle of 75% or so. And I have the red and green LEDs on board. Green represents the high time of the waveform and red represents the low time. Since this is too fast to see them flickering, they just both look on right now. So now we're generating a waveform at 4.5 Hz with a duty cycle of 74%. And it's slow enough we can see the LEDs representing the high and the low time. And I can change the potentiometers, change the frequency. These being multi-turn trimmer pots, it takes a while to see a difference. There's 5 Hz, 11 Hz. 20 Hz, and now the duty cycle is 50%, 62 Hz, and so on. There's 1.6 kHz at 97.7% duty with these timing components. 
So if I take that external capacitor out of circuit again, we're up to 22 kilohertz and hard to trigger on it. We can bring that back down with the potentiometers. So we can use the onboard components. We can use a combination of onboard and external, or we could even use external only just by changing jumpers and making use of the side header pins. If we want to run in monostable mode, now we have a potentiometer still from VCC to discharge, but there's no other resistor. We go straight from discharge to threshold, and then we do not connect threshold to trigger. Trigger is manually controlled. So we set the jumpers for a potentiometer from VCC down to discharge. We move the jumper from this other potentiometer over to threshold, so pin 7 discharge goes straight to pin 6 threshold, and we remove this jumper from threshold to trigger, and we just control the trigger over on the side header. Trigger is active low, so whenever we give a low pulse, the output is going to go high for a duration based on the timing components. Then it will just go back to low and wait for the next trigger. Now I set the board up in monostable mode, so it's not a free-running oscillator. It's going to wait for an active low trigger on channel 1 from a push button, which has a pull-up resistor and a push button to ground. And when this goes low, the output on channel 2 will go from low to high for a preset RC timing duration. So I can give a quick trigger pulse and get a fixed RC time constant output pulse. So there's my short trigger pulse and my output timing pulse. So you can use this to study how this monostable circuit works. There's a longer trigger pulse, but I still get the same output. There's multiple triggers, same output. If I hold the trigger down, it just stays triggered. If I just do a bunch of triggers, it will re-trigger every time it sees the falling edge after the timeout has occurred. So here I triggered it, it did an output pulse, then the next time I gave a low trigger it did another output, and the next time I got a low trigger I got an output. And to play around with the duty cycle control, we put the jumper on both of these headers on the duty percent pin and the one next to it, so discharge goes down to this duty cycle circuit and then that goes on to this potentiometer and back to the circuit. Now to play around with the duty cycle potentiometer, I put it in a stable mode, except I moved these two jumpers over to the D% percent duty cycle position. Now R2 is in circuit, so I can do some frequency adjusting, but I've brought in this circuit over here with this potentiometer for duty cycle, and the network of diodes and resistors. So right now we have a duty cycle of 50% and we are at a frequency of 120 or so hertz. So if I change the potentiometer, the frequency hopefully stays around 120 to 122 hertz and the duty cycle will change. So I'm moving the duty cycle counterclockwise and lowering the duty. 30%, still 122 hertz. And all the way counterclockwise, I was able to get the duty down to about 2%, and the frequency is 124 to 25 hertz. So while we're down here, if I change the frequency potentiometer, as I change the frequency, the duty will shift. So I'll bring it to 100 hertz. and the duty went to 12%, and that was my minimum duty at that frequency, so now I'm adjusting the duty potentiometer. Now I'm at 50 or so percent duty, and I'm 98 hertz. I could get it up to 88% duty and 99 hertz or 100 hertz still. Now to get a higher frequency, I disabled both the onboard capacitors and put a smaller value over on the breadboard. So right now the duty is about 96%, the frequency is about 19 kilohertz. If I adjust the duty cycle, when I go down to around 85, 
25% duty. The frequency is about 21 kilohertz. And it seems to stay around there. I'm lowering it down to about 68% duty. 50% duty, 21.55 kilohertz or so seems consistent. 25% duty, 21.55 kilohertz. And when I get below 10% duty, the frequency again tapers off a bit lower. So I can get the duty down to 4% or so, and it goes to 20 and a half kilohertz. Well, that's how we can use this sort of a dev board to play with monostable mode, a stable mode, and try a bunch of other things with a 555 with a board that we can easily grab from the side and quickly get up and running. We'll use this board in the future and maybe go through some more of its features. And I'm going to do a giveaway for one of these. If you haven't already expressed interest in the original video and you would like to be in the draw for a giveaway, leave a comment below saying, I'd like one of these boards. I'll take submissions from this video and the previous video. And let's meet back here this coming Friday and do the draw. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you're new. I'll see you on the next video.